Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. Currently going through the book of Genesis, verse by verse. We come today to Genesis chapter 27, verse 34. Remember, you can study the whole Bible with me anytime you want to, as much as you want to, any part of the Bible that you want to by going to the Scripture Verse by Verse website, which is found at thebibleversebyverse.com. Check it out. All you have to do is choose one of the four series going through the Bible, and then click the book of the Bible, the chapter, the section, and listen. Bring your Bible. That's all you need at thebibleversebyverse.com. And Father, today we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Genesis chapter 27, verse 34. Jacob, the brother of Esau, had stolen the messianic blessing from his brother Esau, and his father, Isaac, thought he was giving it to Esau, but Jacob disguised himself and pulled off a a pretty impressive deception, and took that messianic blessing from Esau. And Esau is angry. He is ticked. And we're going to see that beginning here in verse 34. Verse 34 says, And when Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with a great and exceedingly bitter cry, and said unto his father, Bless me, even me also, O my father. When Esau heard his father say that someone else had taken the blessing and that it could not be taken back, he then let loose with a bitter cry. 35. And he said, Thy, Isaac said, Thy brother came with subtlety and hath taken away thy blessing. They didn't need to hire a private eye to figure out who did this. They knew it was Jacob, the crafty one. 36. And he said, Is not he rightly named Jacob? For he hath supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright, and behold, now he hath taken away my blessing. And he said, Hast thou not reserved a blessing for me? Notice he wasn't interested in the birthright. He doesn't say, Have you not a birthright for me? Nah, he didn't care about that. Because that involved, that involved, being the family priest, as it were, the spiritual leader in the family, and he had no interest in God whatsoever, but he did want that blessing. And by the way, Esau was not exactly telling the truth here because Jacob did not steal his birthright. Esau did not care about it. So he sold it to Jacob for a bowl of stew when he was hungry one day. So, as we see, there are lies in Scripture, but they are, they are translated and preserved accurately. And he's telling a lie. Revisionist history right here. Verse 37. And Isaac answered and said unto Esau, Behold, I have made him thy Lord, and all his brethren have I given to him for servants. And with grain and wine I have sustained him. And what shall I do now unto thee, my son? You see, Esau wasn't interested in the spiritual birthright with spiritual responsibilities because he didn't care about God, like I said. But he wanted that blessing because it was all about money. It was all about wealth. And of course... The blessing was not magical, but it was that Isaac was a father in the Messianic line. And because of this, 
his blessing carried with it the authority of God. So when Isaac spoke that official blessing, he spoke the words of God. And God does not go back on his word. So that's the reason why it could not be retracted. The blessing in the Messianic line from Abraham to Isaac was proclaimed in the word of God. The blessing from Isaac to Jacob, who stole it, doesn't matter, doesn't matter, was still the word of God. And the word of God does not come back empty, the Bible says. So it can't be retracted. Esau can cry all he wants, but it's not going to do any good. 38. And Esau said unto his father, Hast thou but one blessing? Again, notice he doesn't say, Hast thou but one birthright? Nah. But he says, Hast thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, me even also. Oh, my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. Poor baby. His only concern was about the blessing. And he didn't care if his father had another birthright, which he could give him. No, Esau did not want the birthright because it came with that spiritual responsibility and said it was only the blessing that Esau wanted. The blessing would give Esau a bigger inheritance, and Esau is a man of the world. 39. And Isaac... His father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above. There's not much of a blessing left for Esau. I mean, the big promises are all given to Jacob, the ones that God promised to the Messianic line. That's all been given to Jacob. Uh, Not much left. And Isaac says, Your descendants shall not live in a fertile land. And they did not live in a fertile land. The nation Edom became, or I should say the nation Edom came from Esau, and they lived in the desert. 40. And by thy sword shalt thou live, and shalt serve thy brother, and it shall come to pass, when thou shalt have the dominion, that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. Esau's descendants did serve Jacob's descendants, just exactly as the word of God said. Esau's descendants, the Edomites, served Jacob's descendants, who were the Israelites, for many years. And the descendants of Esau did live by their swords, meaning that the Edomites prospered materially by conquering weaker people. 41. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing with which his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, The days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then will I slay my brother Jacob. So Esau plans to wait until after his father dies. Then he's going to kill Jacob. And since there are no other sons, well, Esau will get that inheritance. Again, he's not going to get the blessing but he will get the inheritance if he can pull that off. 42. And these words of Esau, her elder son, were told to Rebekah. And she sent and called Jacob her younger son and said unto him, Behold, thy brother Esau, as touching thee, doth comfort himself, purposing to kill thee. Everyone needs something to look forward to, I guess, right? Something to live for. So for Esau... It was the plan to kill his brother. Esau lived for revenge. Esau lived for the day that he could murder Jacob and get that bonanza of, of uh, financial blessing. Well, Rebecca, the mom, found out about it. So 43, now therefore, my son, obey my voice and arise. Flee thou to Laban, my brother, to Haran. So... Jacob and his mother both did evil, and it has led to trouble and fear. So now Jacob has to run for his life. The Bible warns us not to do evil, thinking that good will come from it, because it does not. 
you may do something evil because you covet something that doesn't belong to you or you do something wrong because you lust in your heart thinking that you're going to be satisfied and everything will be okay. You are going to reap an abundance of evil for the evil that you do. Whatsoever a man sows, the Bible says, that shall he also reap. So let's read 43 and 44 together as Rachel the mom tells her son Jacob the plan. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice and arise. Flee thou to Laban, my brother, to Haran. Got to get out of town. You got to get out of this area. And you got to go way up north. And she says in verse 44, And tarry with him a few days until thy brother's fury turns away. And those few days turned out to be 20 years. Jacob and Rebecca, his mother, didn't get away with their sin. No, Esau never killed Jacob. And he didn't kill his mother either, although he probably wanted to. But they didn't get away with their sin because while Jacob was gone, way up north by his uncle's place for those 20 years, his mother, Rebecca, died. And Jacob was her favorite son. Rebecca really liked Jacob, and Jacob liked his mom. But she never saw him again. They never saw each other again. 45. Until thy brother's anger turn away from thee, and he forget that which thou hast done to him. Then I will send and fetch thee from there. Why should I be deprived also of you both in one day? And of course, that message was never sent. She never sent it. She died. And do you remember when Rebecca told Jacob, when they were planning this deception? Do you remember what she said? She said to her son, don't worry, because he expressed concern. Hey, if I get caught in this deception, I'm going to seem to be a deceiver. Well, yeah, and then I'm going to be in big trouble. And Rebecca said, don't worry, Jacob. Because if you got, get caught, I will take the curse of your sin and I will take the consequences. That's what she said when they were plotting. Don't worry. If you get caught, I'll take the consequences. But now she's changed her tune. Now she says, you better run, Jacob. You better run until your brother forgets what you did to him. She doesn't even say what we did to him, what you did to him. When a person sins, they live with the consequences and the guilt. And no one else can take that from them. They will bear that alone. So when you're tempted to sin or somebody is tempting you to sin and somebody says, well, don't worry about it. It's not going to be that. It'll be okay. Mm -hmm. It'll be okay for them because they're not the one sinning. But it won't be okay for you because you're going to reap the trouble that that sin will bring. 46. And Rebecca said to Isaac, I am weary of my life because of the daughters of Heth. If Jacob take a wife of the daughters of Heth, such as these who are the daughters of the land, what good shall my life do me? And as an excuse to get Jacob away from Esau, Rebecca tells Isaac, we just can't let Jacob marry one of these unsaved women who live in this area. We have to send him 500 miles away to the place where your father's servant found me way back home, 500 miles away, because there are some believers up there. That was her excuse to get Jacob out of town. And we'll stop right there. In the meantime, as I said, you can study the whole Bible with me from Genesis through Revelation, verse by verse, at thebibleversebyverse.com. And if you would like to be a part of this ministry of getting out God's word, then please pray for me and pray for God's word. 
And when you take a break from studying, go to the front page at thebibleversebyverse.com and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. And until next time, so long, everyone.